So hi and welcome to the next episode of uh, podcast Deep Talks. My today's guest is Dan uh, Seafold. Dan is a, a former head of innovation uh, at Pfizer, the worldwide innovation. So uh, he has a lot of experience because Pfizer is a huge company. A Fortune 500 company, and they have about like 100,000 employees. Is it right? That's right. So, one of the biggest companies here in the US. That's true. And one then, of the largest life science companies in the world. And then you made a decision and you left and you started your own business. Deliberate innovation. That's so cool. So, I want to know everything like from the beginning, like uh, how you get to Pfizer, what you did there as a head of innovation. And I want to know like the difference between startup, having startup and have a freedom and uh, like compare the style of uh, leadership in big corporation and staff leadership if you have only a few people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll start from the beginning and just tell you a little bit about kind of the journey. So I often say that my my innovation background is atypical, but I think the notion of, of innovation is always atypical. Uh -huh. So I, my first career, if you will, was as a, a high school wrestling coach. So okay. you know, the sport wrestling in the Olympics, uh -huh. not the fake stuff with body slams, and, uh -huh. but I worked, coach, worked with coaching kids and um, that was really instructive later on, I found for working in innovation because you have to build a coach, culture as a coach. You have to, to inspire people to believe in a team. You have to be able to create purpose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think of you know innovation and even coaching a team as all about just getting results. And results do matter. We do measure ourselves and our performance by the results we get. But at the end of the day, the thing that changes and makes people from just regular competitors into champions is when you build a spirit or an ethos within the team. And I thought I was gonna come in as a 20 year old. I was still in college when I started coaching. I thought I would come in and I would teach them everything I know. I was a college wrestler myself and I thought it was all about the technique. Just like with innovation, a lot of people think it's all about, I'm gonna teach them design thinking or create a problem solving. <laughs> Those are the tools, but the mindset, that's what makes all the difference. So I found very quickly as a coach that you have to think differently and you have to rally people to believe in something bigger than themselves. So that was maybe one of the most instructive. I then went to do something a little bit more mundane. I became a certified public accountant, okay. which is very different than me a wrestling coach. I studied it at my university. I wasn't sure that this is the path I wanted to take in my life, but there's a line in, uh, in Shakespeare's Macbeth that I've waded so far out into blood that it's hard to turn back. You have to just keep going forward. Yeah. And some point in your life, you wade so far, it's easier to keep going forward than it is to go back. So for several years, I worked in a role of doing auditing and I did a variety of things in auditing from forensic auditing, which mm -hmm. is tracking illegal or illicit Fraud. behavior and mm -hmm. tracking also and doing uh, business process audits to understand business. And it's interesting because sometimes doing things that you don't love are the things that instruct you later on life about what you will love. Okay. So that very quickly had informed me, it's really valuable to be meticulous and analytical, but as a, a life's passion and pursuit, as a purpose, that wasn't the purpose I wanted to proceed. So I went through many different pivots in my career. And I think anybody who knows exactly what they wanted to do when they were growing up is blessed. Yep. I am not one of those blessed people. I think the majority of people are not. My wife knew from the time she was young that she was gonna be a speech pathologist and that's what she does and that's what she loves. Yeah, I that's the blessing, sure. like, yeah. It is, and so I went from being a CPA, to being a process engineer, uh -huh. to being a market researcher, to being a moderator, doing uh -huh. interviews, to being a, a marketer, to a new product developer, and eventually a head of marketing, and then oh, about six, seven years ago, really working in this vocation of innovation uh -huh. and applied creativity. Uh -huh. So it's been this long, jagged process, which 
If I told you there was an intelligent design behind mm-hmm. it, I would be lying to you. <laughs> but it was all about knowing where your passion is and doing things that help get you there. Ahoj, tady Petr, já vás zdravím z New Yorku. Super, že jste dokoukali a doposlouchali až sem. Pokud chcete vidět nebo taky slyšet celý tenhle rozhovor, a najdete ho na našem novém kompletně anglickém uh, YouTube kanále a nebo na našem novém taky kompletně anglickém uh, podcastu Deep Talks v hranatech závorkách NG jako English. Odkazy najdete pod videem nebo v popisku podcastu a já vám moc děkuju, že Deep Talk sledujete a posloucháte a super je, že teďka budete moc poslouchat všechno i v angličtině. Takže díky za pozornost, mějte se krásně.